Hey guys, Sean Hamlin with PremierGuitar.com in Anaheim, California at Winter NAMM 2016. We're talking to Mark Bartell from Tone King Amps. Mark, how's it going? Hey Sean, good to see you again. Good to see you, man. It's uh, our first video of the day on Saturday, and uh, we're taking a look at this really cool new new version of an app you've had for a couple years now, right? The Royalist? That's right. The Royalist came out about two years ago, and it's kind of Tone King's version of the low-gain British sound. And it spans from, say, the early JTM 45 sound to like a little hotter, like JMP 50 kind of sound. So great for ACDC, Led Zeppelin, classic rock type stuff. But this year, uh, I did update it a little bit. I didn't change the basic design at all. Same tone stack and all that. Exactly. The only thing I did was I upgraded the attenuator from the original Iron Man 1 to the new Iron Man 2 architecture which is a little more sophisticated and it has the reactive load but it also has compensation circuitry to maintain the tonal balance as you attenuate so uh, so when you uh, expand on that like unpack what that means the reactive load part and then what else, the other stuff you were mentioning absolutely well the original iron man one that had a reactive load as well but uh, it went that's as far as it went as you as you uh, attenuated um, you just got the frequency response main, remained uh, consi remained the same as it change it. But this actually has compensation circuitry, so it modifies the EQ curve as you attenuate to preserve the apparent uh, tonal balance at low volume. Because you know, if you just reduce the level without uh, changing the EQ curve, it's going to sound mid-rangey. It might lose punch and presence. It's just simple physics of the speaker and all that with less power going into it, right? That and the way the air perceives sound at lower volume, exactly. And then what was the other main feature you said that's new in this attenuator? Well, the, well, that's all for the attenuator, but the other feature we did for the amp is we added uh, a deep input. The original design only had a single input. Uh, and what we found was that a lot of guys were using the, the Royalist for lower gain, clean sounds. And, you know, it's intended more for, like, you know, ACDC. But, um, it does sound great for, for low gain clean, and to, to help them with that, we added the deep input, which is a little lower gain, a little fatter in the bottom, and not so trebly on the top, so a nice balanced sound. But a side benefit of that is, in addition to working great for cleans, you can get kind of a, like almost a cranked basement kind of uh, overdrive sound, too. So when we came into the video, you had the volume, it looks like it's at about 1 o'clock, and what was the attenuator set at? I'm down to uh, minus 15 dB on the attenuator. It goes much, much, much lower. I mean, we're, here it is at uh, minus 15. And we'll go down a step. So what, why don't we, it'll be tough to, for guys watching on their computers or devices or whatever to <clears throat> perceive the volume difference as well as we can here in this show, but like, at the same setting we heard before, <clears throat> can you show us what it would be like to have the volume cranked up more? Oh, sure. You mean a little more gain? Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, here we are at minus 15, and... So that's with the volume almost at noon, a little, little past. You know, go down a little bit. So it's just on a nice edge to it. What happens if we dime it? Okay, I'm warning you. <laughs> that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. No, no warning needed. Um, do you want to show us what the deep input sounds like? Sure, sure. So I'm going to turn down a little bit, about ha halfway up on the volume. I'm going to show the difference between the, deep, the bright and the deep. Here's the bright. I'll go over the deep. There. Warmer and mellower? Yeah, exactly. So Mark, you've got the Royalist 45 Mark II head and you also have a combo here, which is a 112? It's a 112 combo. It just comes in those two configurations. Head is 2695, combo is 2995. 
What's the speaker in the combo? The speaker in the combo is a custom speaker made by Eminence. And uh, the interesting thing about the speaker is, you know, this is more of a, obviously, a vintage British design, so I intended to use a greenback. But it, with the cabinet size I was limited to, and trying to achieve the, si the sound of a 412, I had to have some tweaks made to that formula. So I had Eminence come up with a design that works for me that I think gives you that sound even better than a greenback would in this cabinet of this size. Now that you mentioned that, it reminds me before we started videoing, we were talking about the cabinet and you were talking about, well, it's, it feels to you kind of big. It, and I was like, it, it looks great to me. But I think it's really um, something that it, you deserve kudos for, that you are not just designing the cabinet to the size that looks good, but you're like, that it has to be these dimensions in order to get the sound that people want out of this. So, I mean, I don't think... Some companies are just like, make it this size, or, and who cares, you know? Exactly. Well, that's my thing. I mean, that's really what distinguishes my designs, is that I put m half of my effort into designing the cab. That's where a lot of the voicing comes from, and, uh, you know, dynamic. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, before we go, we want to tell us about this other box up top you have here. Sure. This is our new product for this year. Um, you know, I've been developing the Iron Man to uh, attenuator uh, for several years now and I think it's reached the point where it's it's a very sophisticated unit and it's it's very transparent it's about as good as I'm gonna be able to do now, now in the past your attenuator the Iron Man was always built into amps right well the original Iron Man attenuator was designed in conjunction with the old galaxy amp and it was a standalone unit and then we later started building them into the amps and then I started working from there from the original Iron Man one and improving things and like I said I added the compensation circuitry some circuitry to um, help the speaker perform more and more naturally at very low volumes so it's a fairly sophisticated design at this point and I wanted to put it into a box that to start out was you know reasonably priced you know our original Iron Man was uh, was a very sophisticated and high-end unit but pretty pricey and I wanted to take that state-of-the-art attenuation technology and, and make it affordable for guys with smaller amps. So how I did that was I limited the power, the max power to 30 watts, 8 ohms only. So it doesn't have, it can't, you can't put your big Marshall into it, but it's great for something like an AC30 or on down. And um, it's actually got a lot of, even though it doesn't offer high power or multiple impedances, it's got some really cool features. For instance, I mean, obviously it can be used as a standalone attenuator. Plug it between your amp and your speaker, you've got 18 different attenuation levels. Number two, you could use it in live performance. Uh, it's got this solo button, so if you put it on the floor like a pedal, hit the solo button and you get a calibrated either 3 dB or 6 dB, you know, reduction in attenuation. Uh, you know, I didn't want to call it a boost because it's not technically a boost but it's just the right amount to get you above the band. It's not like bypassed, so it would be much louder. It's just a nice amount. And third, you could use it as a standalone reactive load. Just plug your amplifier in. You don't even need to plug a speaker in. Go from line out to DI or reamp or whatever you want to do. So all that stuff, and uh, it's going to sell for 395 bucks. Cool. Now, as you were talking about using the solo button, I was wondering, just curious, do you, do you anticipate that the sound would be different if someone were using this and instead of using the solo button they just step on a boost from their pedal board? Would the sound be noticeably different in your totally opinion? Different, totally different. Because if you hit a, a boost from your pedal board, that's just going to increase the gain. The output stage of your amp is presumably already saturated, so it's not going to really get much louder. Now, of course, this is for the specific application of people wanting to get power tube overdrive. And so that's what this is all about. You know, this is the only way to, to control the volume once your tubes are saturated and running and clipping. So that's going for 395 you said? 395 Well, why don't you tell everyone where they should go online to find out more about your whole line of products? ToneKing.com. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com.